Last week we had a baptism and then another one and then another one and then another one and then another one. Wednesday. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tuesday night I got a call. Someone said, can you baptize me tomorrow on Wednesday? I said, let me pray about it. Yes. <laughs> Amen. God is calling. God is moving. And we believe that. Wednesday night in our prayer service, we have a fixed time of prayer that we dedicate ourselves to. We press in. It's one of the highlights of the week. If you miss Wednesday night, you just need to come and experience it a few times and get in the flow with us. We're building that up, and I'm excited about that. This past Wednesday night, we're praying. We're just about ready to close the service. It's right around 8 o'clock, and someone points to the baptistry, and it was Arizona. Stand up, Arizona. She gave her heart to the Lord, and Wednesday night, she was baptized. In the wonderful name of the Lord. So we had a baptism at noon and another one at 8 o'clock. God is on the move. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In just a moment, I'm going to call Adrian and Ruth Weaver up. And today's service, if you're new with us, I say welcome. Thank you for coming and joining in with us today. And we want you to experience the Lord. Amen. We're, we don't have a lot to offer in the, in the terms of, of just religion or, or ritual or those sort of things. But we have uh, a whole lot of people who are searching and seeking for Jesus. And a whole lot of people who are living out in their daily lives the love of Jesus Christ. And we're here to help you find your way on that journey. And we promise you we'll do our very best to lead and follow him and prepare the way for the Lord to do great things in your life. So today we're ordaining into ministry our pastors that are going to be founding a brand new river in western Indiana. Adrian and Ruth Weaver and their family. And I am uh, asked quite a, often to minister to churches and pastors concerning spiritual order and uh, helping to align the ministry in the earth with the heavenly example. Order is very much a part of what God does. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and God said, let there be light. And in bringing light into the world, he brought order into chaos. We don't really know. Science cannot really tell us what it looked like in a chaotic state. But we know that God, it took God to bring order to the chaotic thing that he had created. And when he called it into order, it came into order. And it's through that order. If you studied fifth grade science, you know there's order. Amen? At least that's what they taught when I was in school. It's probably changed now, but... Anyway, if you read the real books, you'll get that. Your body is an order itself. Your, your mind and your heart are connected in a powerful way, and if things stay in order, you stay healthy. When things get out of order, you get sick. Dis-ease is disorder. 
It's out of order. It's out of peace. When I prayed over some of the people this morning as I laid hands on them concerning fear, God showed me an order that brings peace and safety and security. Amen? Your children feel safe because they trust mom and dad. They're in order. If they escape that order, they're, they're vulnerable. Amen? If they come out from under your roof and you're covering, there's a lot of things that can happen to a child without a home. But God has given us an order. And I encourage all of you to find that order and stay in that order and submit to that order. It's a peaceful and restful place to dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen? And so we take very uh, deliberate measures to set into order the pastors and elders of this house, and we take our time. The Bible says lay hands suddenly on no one. So we weigh it out. We pray. We fast. We ask them to pray and fast. And I'm going to invite uh, Mike and Cindy along with our elders and pastors up in just a moment. And there's a great testimony uh, that goes along with the Weaver family. Um, Adrian, I think I'll have you come up here just before your family comes. Would you come and why don't you share with them about that Sunday afternoon that you got in your van with your children and your son-in-law and to be, I think he was a son-in-law to be at that time. Just fill us in on that little uh, afternoon story real quick, if you don't mind. This is Adrian Weaver. Everybody praise the Lord for Adrian. Absolutely. Hello. Awesome. So, that, that very Sunday that Paul is talking about, in, in, the, in, in the morning, the, the church congregation that we were attending, that we were worship, worshiping at, God came to us, especially to me that morning, very clearly, that he is calling us into something deeper, something more. At that time, it almost seemed to me like, where I was at in life, it seemed to me like, God just closed a door, but I think uh, that this past 21 days of fasting, God has so showed me something a little bit deeper in what he was trying to tell us that day, is he, he actually opened a door, and it was so foreign to me, I barely knew what I'm seeing. <laughs> so wow. so that, very, that very morning, we were all gathered as a family, and as Paul was saying, there was a son-in-law to be in the family there that was with us. And just prior to that, our oldest daughter, Marlene, had met Mike and Zint Cindy coming to Millersburg, Ohio, reaching out in obedience. Uh, so she just started sharing with this, and, and, and all we knew was, or all she knew to tell us was their names, and they're in Lancaster. Um, am I correct that you knew about the name The River? So I said, listen, we're going to keep moving. I know where Lancaster is. I was in construction for so many years, and I traveled Coon, Coon Path Road 20, 25 years ago. Didn't know about the river. So I said, we have more than Abraham had. I know where Lancaster is. <laughs> I can find that, and I knew where Rising Park is. I would pass by there all the time. So that's where we went. So my wife, Ruth, we, we just go in the park there. We park like just anybody else, but we had an intention in mind. So this, the Spirit of the Lord just led my wife, Ruth, to this lady. We never saw her since. We don't know who she is. I'm going to go ask her if she knows about this church, the river. 
She said, oh yeah, it's on Coon Path Road. And I said, hmm, I've traveled that road. I'm sure we can find it. So we get here and it was like at one, I'm just guessing a little bit here, maybe at 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, um, the parking lot was completely empty on the front side and we, we drive around this side of the building and guess who was still parked here? <laughs> Dave, 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 would you just come up here a little bit? I, 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 bring your wife with you. I, I just think they need to share. Amen. That, that was... That was really a, a, a deep moment to, to hear their story, how God kept them here. As, as we all know, Dave, Dave and his wife, they're always the last people out here, but, but it was just a little bit longer that day. Wonderful people. Amen. We, we just enjoy these people so much. Come up here. I want, I want you guys to share just, just your part of it, how God uh, was speaking to you all, how, how that all went that day. And, and uh, of, of course, uh, Sherry, am I? Sherry. Go ahead. Well, everybody had gone home, and I just was in my spirit just really uncomfortable. And I didn't know why. And I thought maybe we were supposed to come back in here and pray. And just couldn't go home. And I told David, I said, we're, we just can't leave. I didn't know why. So we just went, stayed in here for a while, but then we went back and just sat in the car and just waited. And then you showed up. <laughs> wow. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You can stay up here and uh, bring your wife up, and you guys can just sit right there and Paul writes to Timothy in the first letter chapter 3 this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop must then be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well in his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Everybody say amen. amen. And I'll dismiss our children to class at this time. I love our children's ministry. We have a wonderful children's pastor and great teachers. And uh, Josh, you might want to have Joshua stay in here. I don't know if he's already escaped the country, but it, he can be getting ready here pretty soon for baptism. And we'll bring the children back over if we can. For that. So it was a ritual and a practice in the New Testament times for an apostle to lay hands on and ordain 
the next generation of leaders. A lot of times it's the younger generation, a lot of times it's peers, and sometimes it, you anoint people that are older but have come to the Lord later in life or have felt and heard a call to ministry later in life. And so we bring them up before the local church and we announce and show them to the people and they take a great bold step forward into being placed and set in ministry. When God sets you in ministry, he puts an order there and he does not send you without giving you authority. I don't know the strongholds of your city, but I look forward to coming and getting in and experiencing that. I don't know the, the spiritual authorities that God has raised up prior to you to pave the way, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. But God is giving you a place in the earth. What God is doing here today is simply bringing to earthly witness what he's already done in the heavenlies. So before you got in that Sunday morning service and you felt God moving you to something deeper, he had already determined that this day was going to happen. And when we met over there in the choir room that Sunday afternoon some three or so years ago, God already knew that this day. So the joy we felt in our heart was beyond what we even thought about or could comprehend at that time. In 1 Kings chapter 19, the Bible said, Jehu the son of Nimshi shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. Elisha the son of Shaphat and Abel Maholah shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Haziel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. So he departed thence and found Elisha the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And in your case, putting siding on houses or building room additions, and that sort of thing. Or plowing oxen, I don't know. <laughs> do you, you don't have 12 yoke of oxen, do you? No, he doesn't, doesn't have that. He said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of oxen and gave it to the people, and they did eat. Then he arose, and Elijah, after Elijah, and ministered unto him. The lesson here is that Elisha was about to receive a mantle of anointing from Elijah. And even though Elijah said, you know, just go on back and do your thing, Elisha said, I'm coming after you. I'm not going to leave you. And the Bible says that Elisha ministered to Elijah. Here's a lesson for all of you that are young in ministry or wanting to be in ministry. Serve Elijah. Minister to Elijah. Provide, make sure Elijah is okay. Make sure Elijah is taken care of. And God will always bring around you the people you need. Your support group will never diminish. It will only increase. There are Elijahs in your area that you will meet. Serve and minister to them who have paved the way, who have already prayed into this movement of God. Somebody for dozens of years, maybe longer, has been praying in that area and God's going to lead you to them. It might be a a little lady somewhere, it might be a grandpa or a pastor, they may not be in ministry, I don't know, but there will be Elijahs that God will call you to and you'll recognize them. We are this coming week laying to rest an Elijah in our lives, Papa Dorn in uh, Orlando, Florida, Dino's spiritual father, y'all know Dino real well, 
His spiritual father passed away last night, 92 years old, a powerful man of God who pioneered the spirit-filled movement in the 50s and 60s and had such a great anointing that's being passed on today to us and to you and to the people there in Florida. We believe in that order. We believe in those mantles. Amen? So my admonition to you today is don't be afraid. The first thing the enemy wants to do is make you afraid. First thing Joshua battled was fear. And you will not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Make sure you understand your spiritual connections and keep those tight with Mike and Cindy, Paula and myself, the elders of this house, this church. The message with that is you are never alone. You are never alone. Divine order is everything. Amen? Cultivate those relationships and nourish them. Paul told the church at Corinth, some water, some plant, but God gives the increase. You may be planting some seed. You may be watering some seed. And there may be others who've planted that you will water. But the bottom line is, God gives the increase. Amen? Amen. So, if you would be seated here, uh, we're going to bring our elders and pastors up to join Dave and Jerry and Paula and I. And uh, Paula, if you would come over, we're going to lay hands on them and anoint them. And let the word of the Lord speak over them today. George, you and Ruth can come up as well. Ruth Ann, um, thank you. We have a great group here, and we want to bless you. We want the anointing of the mantle of God that has come over me through the generations. My grandfather on my mother's side was a pastor who prayed over me as a baby. My dad was a pastor, is a pastor who's still living, has prayed over me uh, many times and has passed on a mantle along with Paula's grandfather and her father. And we are here today to give you all that we have. Everything that God has given and trusted us with, we have been stewards to bring it to this day, to pass it on to you. Aren't you glad God's not limited? And we're not diminished, Mike, George. We're not diminished by passing on. We increase as we go with it. God increases in them and then increases back into us, and we continue to pour that out. Amen? And so today, uh, you want Joel and Martine to just come up? Bring them on up. Come on up, family. Your children that are not gone to class can just come on up and join us. That's a great idea. We're going to pray for uh, Isaiah here in a minute as well. Thank you. Everybody knows Joel and Marlene. They're famous at the river. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The holy anointing of God. We place upon the head of this house. We anoint Adrian today in the name of Jesus as an apostle of the faith that you have delivered to us. The faith that is our victory over every demon, over every addiction, over every sin and disease in that region that you've placed them in. God, you know exactly what you've given them as far as their authority goes in the realm. Give them wisdom. I release the spirit of wisdom upon this man of God. Whew, that the spirit of wisdom would rest upon him as Moses placed upon Joshua. That spirit of wisdom would 
come upon him in the name of Jesus, that it would work out in him and he would have the wisdom to know how far to go, where to go. You would give him wisdom, Lord, in, in situations where people come at, to him to seek counsel. That's right. That's right. The spirit of counsel be upon him. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a culture that's about to be changed. There's a culture that's about to be broken. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for injecting your spirit of innovation into them, spiritual innovations, spiritual pathways that they're going to see. And God, more than anything else, love. There's going to be a baptism of love like they've never seen in their community, in their home, in this old barn that they're working on. People are going to walk into that barn even while it's still dirt and dust. They're going to walk into it and say, I feel love here. I feel love in this barn. Oh, let your glory fall. Let your glory and power be made known in everything they do. Bless their children. Bring a total healing, God, to their children and their family. Let the manifestation of signs and wonders be known. Let it be noised abroad. Your voice will be heard. Your voice will be heard. The shout of the Lord, the roar of the lion will be heard in western Indiana, in this whole region where they live. There's going to be a sound of a roar that's coming forth in the earth, God. And it will echo, and it will shake, and it will break off and destroy the yokes of bondage and old mindsets. And I pray that the religious spirits uh, that are in that area would respond to this man of God uh, and that ministers would come to him and say, teach me what you have. Show me in the Word of God what I'm missing. Show me the new thing that God is doing. I'm hungry for more. I'm hungry for more. There is a hunger that is being stirred in that area. And God is going to use you to fill it in the name of Jesus and increase them in their income, Lord. Let, let finances just flow from out of places they never dreamed. Let finances be more than enough. They will never lack for materials in the building process. They'll never lack for financial resources as needed. Over and above, they'll be able to help and reach out and give and do because they are givers in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. I, I hear the Lord say, I have raised you up as a light in a region of darkness. All the darkness is not obvious as you go, your eyes will be open to more of it, and you will see in the Spirit. Do not be afraid of anything that opposes you, because I have given you authority over every evil. You are well able to do this job. You are well able to handle this ministry. So go forth and be everything that I have called you to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's a new meaning of the coat of many colors. Mm. Represents culture, yes. color of every kind. Yes. That will be welcome in that river. Yes. Glory barn. In the kavod, the weightiness of your glory, the Shekinah that we feel and see and witness here now. Will also be there. Amen. For many afar, they will see that property line with the golden, the golden representing the anointing, the angelic host. We thank you, Lord. That each and every person of all walks of life will feel welcome in this barn. 
Amen. We thank you, Lord, that the vision that they have will surely come to pass. Yes, Lord. We know and understand the order of things. Yes, Lord. What's coming first, second, third, fourth, and down the line. Mm. And we say welcome home yes. to those who have not yet come. Amen. And the ones that are there and the ones that we got to meet with mm -hmm. precious hearts. Hallelujah. Sold out. Hallelujah. Ready to serve. We talked about putting the towel on the arm. Oh, yeah. Like Pastor had taught us. To yes. serve everywhere that we go. Yes. We speak your mm. richest blessings. Yes, Lord. On the Weaver family, the yes, property. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The buildings that are about to be built and yes, the Lord. barn that's about to be restored. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Speak blessings. Jesus is my name. Amen. Amen. There will be an earthquake. Not a physical one, but it's going to be a spiritual one. And it's going to send the tremors, and, and those tremors will be distant because they're going to affect everyone that they come and they hit. You know. Amen. So there's always an epicenter to an earthquake, and you are going to be the epicenter at the glory barn. Hallelujah! You just stand back and watch and see what God does. <laughs> And you're going to just Thank shake you, your head Jesus. over and over again and just Thank say, you, we Jesus. never knew. We never yes, we never more, knew. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want you to stand to your feet. And reach your arms in this direction. And let's thank the Lord for what he's doing and he's about to do. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, for your word in this house. We thank you for your word that's going to go forth freely, freely from Ruth and from Adrian. The word is going to flow out of them, words they never even thought of. It's going to come forth through them. They're not even going to premeditate to have to study or dig to know what to say. You're just going to release it in them, and the glory of the Lord will be known, and people will worship you, God, at their prompting. You're going to send them musicians and singers, uh, that people that can lead into the presence and power of Almighty God, anointed singers and dedicated worshipers to this house uh, and we thank you Lord in advance for what you're doing and uh, are gonna do and we praise you and give you glory and honor amen let's give a shout to the Lord hallelujah Woo! amen 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 you can be seated thank you everybody uh, Josh go ahead and get little Josh Joshua, dressed for baptism. Amen. Yes. Isaiah, don't don't go anywhere. Come on up here. You stay. We have any uh, veterans that want to come and help us? We're going to lay hands on Isaiah this morning. He's going into the military. And, amen. He is a, I think he was here about three or four years ago, and I didn't recognize him this morning. Because when you're 17, a lot happens from 14 to 17. You know what I mean? I almost have to look up to him. Amen. So I'm going to ask Pastor Ben, would you grab some oil there, Pastor? And we're going to anoint this man. He's... Uh, signed up to serve our country and fight for our freedom. And aren't you glad we got somebody strong, somebody spirit-filled, somebody that believes the Bible that'll join into our armed forces and uh, protect us? Go ahead. You want to lead? The pulpit mic. Isaiah, what branch are you going in? Army, do you know what your, your MOS is going to be? Infantry. 
Lord, we praise you, God, for, for Isaiah, Lord, that you have called yes. him to the, the mission field of the yes. battlefield. Lord, that there are hearts and souls, Lord, that need your light, need your truth. Lord, and you have called Isaiah for such a time as this, Lord, for this purpose. Lord, that this is a, not yes. just a, a, a worldly call, but, a, but a, a ascending in the kingdom, Lord, where you have, you have prepared him for such a time as this. Lord, yes, and from Jesus. his youth, Lord, you have prepared him for, for this path, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Lord, to minister, to bring hope, to bring your light and truth, Lord, to, to, to fight for our freedom. So we honor this, this young man who has, who has stepped up and put his name on, on the line and said, yes, I'll, I will fight for the yes. freedoms so that, so that your name can be glorified in, in this country, so that my generations would, would be secure. Lord, I thank you, Father, for, for, for doing this in, in this young man, that you provide every step of the way, that he feels your presence, Lord, in every step, Lord, in, 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 in training, Lord, and, and, and beyond. Lord, that you are providing that that his his he is increased, Lord, in his understanding of your character, Lord, of of who you are, Lord, Lord, the things that he's been taught become real to him in this time, a maturing, Lord, uh, of 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 spiritual maturity, Lord, that his faith becomes his own, Lord, he decides for himself, Lord, that you are you are King and you are Lord, and he will stand and fight for you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, Lord, that for for those that you're that are that are that are being brought to him. Lord, that have questions, that, have, that, that, that don't know you. Lord, that are struggling in their minds, struggling in their hearts, Lord. Lord, that you have prepared Isaiah and, 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 and have taught him um, the, the truth that, 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 that he needs. And you give him the words in season and in moments, Lord God. Lord, that his, his, his time with you is so rich, so, so full. Lord, he clings to, to your word as, as strength, just as, just as our bodies need food and sustenance, Lord. He clings to your presence, Lord. You, you, you just supply his every need. And I thank you, Father, Lord, for, for what is to come, the fruit of this, the the fruit of this ministry, the fruit of this calling, Lord, and the lives that are being saved physically and spiritually, Lord, from the from from the battlefield, uh, Lord, and and from hell. We thank you, Jesus, for for the call on his life that you you blow his mind exceedingly above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. All that his his hopes and dreams of of the impact that he can make, Lord. I pray that you just blow his mind, Lord, about about how how well you can provide and how you are a God who always provides and you are a God who is always there, a faithful Father. We thank you, Jesus. Increase his faith. Let faith arise in him. Bring those, th- those to, around him to, to encourage him, Lord. Brothers um, that, that, can, that can strengthen him, Lord, and be there for him. And it be, uh, uh, be, bring you glory because you are, you are doing it all. We just, we just give you praise. You are King of kings, Lord of lords. Through Isaiah, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Isaiah was born and raised into the Amish and Mennonite community, and they're opposed to any kind of military or army uh, involvement. So what he's doing is, a, is, a, is breaking out of that culture. It's a huge step of faith on his part, and uh, he feels like it's something that's going to be a part of his life, something he needs to do uh, to serve in that way. So... Uh, I, I applaud him for that, and, and Adrian t- asked me, he said, what do you do to, uh, for someone who wants to go into the military? I said, we pray over him, and he said, well, first of all, I want to be his biggest fan, and second of all, I want to be his intercessor, and uh, that's a good daddy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're going to in- enter into a, a time of worship here as we... Uh, close with with baptism and with prayer. Uh, I wanted uh, Jacob Jenkins is sitting back there in the booth with his mother, Kim. Kim makes us all uh, know the words to the songs on Sunday, and and I'm so happy that we have Kim. She's so faithful to do that. But uh, Jacob, just wave at everybody. He's making a public profession of his faith and. Wednesday, he was baptized right there in the wonderful name of Jesus. And we're all your family now. You see how many brothers and sisters you have that you didn't know you had. And uh, we're going to make sure that you uh, walk this out, okay, and support you and love you and disciple you in your days and weeks ahead. Because it, 
A newborn baby doesn't just jump up, start walking and talking and feeding themselves. Somebody has to be a mother and a father. And we've got some good mothers and fathers here in this house with the tools that you need. Amen. And if you're new to this house, we have discipleship classes going on on Saturday night, Wednesday night at 7, uh, level 1 and 2 of the Father's House series. We have mentors that will visit with you, spend time with you, have coffee with you, and that's really, really important. Amen? Amen. I want to invite uh, Greg to come lead us in our declaration. I tell you what. Giving is a big part of what God is doing. Amen? Amen? Boy, if he's blessed your life financially, just raise your hand. You feel blessed? You're grateful? Wow. God is so good. Amen. Lead us, Greg. Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. There we go. What a wonderful morning. Amen? Amen. Oh, wow. Well, welcome to everyone. And if this is your first time at the river with us, will you wave at me? Let me see if there's any. First time today, right? Back row. Thank you. We're glad you're here this morning. Welcome. And we're glad to see some of you back for the second time or the 72nd time. So welcome. Welcome to our online um, streaming congregation, we're so glad that you join us on Sunday when you can't be here in the house. Um, we appreciate your presence um, there. And we want to invite you, those that are here with us, to reach in the seat back in front of you and fill out this card. It says, First Time Visitor. And you can drop that off at the hayloft right outside between the two doors that you walk into the sanctuary. And really, that's just an opportunity for us to get to know you, um, know you were here and we'll get your name, an email, and the date. That's all that asks for. And we're not going to um, spam your email box, but we do want to connect with you. And if you have questions, it gives you a resource that you can ask and learn about what's going on here at the river. There's many, many good things, and we want to make sure that, that we share that with you. If you've been here, this is your second time or beyond, and you've not filled out the second time visitor card, we'd love to have you do that. That gets a little more information, and uh, we can talk about that at the Hayloft as well. So please uh, avail yourself to that those bits of information so that we can get to know you better. And we're so glad you're here. And um, second time and beyond, there's a gift for you out there, so make sure you get that. Um, with our offering, if you've got your offering ready, if you haven't dropped it in already, um, whether that be the, the online application, you can give through Church Center, your wallet, your checkbook, your phone, a lot of our congregation gives that way. Go ahead and hold that up with me, and let's declare this together. I declare Proverbs 3.10, every dimension of my life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of inner joy as I honor God with my first fruits in Jesus' holy name. And we don't pass the bucket or the plate here. There's a box at the exit, um, every exit from the sanctuary labeled tithe and offering. So we encourage you to sew that into that box. God bless you all. Amen. All right. Is Joshua ready? Andrew, would you bring them on out here? We're going to do a, a water baptism. Is there anyone else here today the Lord has moved on your heart and you would like to uh, know more about your walk with Jesus, just raise your hand. Would you like to have prayer today? Uh, give your heart to Jesus. Make a decision for the Lord. Walk with him in water baptism. Amen. Anybody else? All right. Let's all stand. And I want to invite uh, the Peck family to come on down, if you would, to the front where you can see. And... Uh, Joshua, you are such a good-looking man, and I'm very proud of you for boldly stepping up today to this move, okay? You know what it means to follow Jesus, and you want him in your heart forever, right? Amen. Did Mike and Dustin pray with you already? 
All right, I'm going to invite this entire church to pray for this young man and this family, if you would. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're making a start for you today. Joshua wants to follow you with all of his heart. He wants to live for you, serve you. And God, this young man is destined for purpose and greatness in you. And the things that you have, are leading him to, God, you'll direct his heart, Lord, as he begins to give up some of the things, Lord, in his life and say, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to, I want to read my Bible or I want to listen to Christian music. And you'll begin to direct him, Lord, in new ways that he can serve you, new ways that he can learn about you. Touch his parents' heart, Lord. I just pray today, God, for Josh and Erica. Lord, I just believe you, Lord, to touch their hearts. Let them know, God, how to make wise decisions to lead him in the ways of truth and in the ways of the Lord. And I thank you for his grandmother here today, Lord. And, Lord, I just pray for this family that your grace and mercy be upon them. Love them with an everlasting love. And let them know you in a greater way, Lord. We want more of you, God. We want to know you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody say amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Joshua, on profession of your faith in Jesus and that his blood cleanse you from all your sins I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord thank you Jesus thank you Jesus that's it that's it I love you Jesus Hallelujah! Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God.
want to, so I'm going to go ahead and give you the green light. Give about five people a big old hug. In Jesus' name, feel the love that he's got for you, for the children. That's it. Oh, yeah. Wow. Amazing God. Amazing grace. Amazing love. Cody Frank birthday. Tom and Diane are going to have an anniversary coming up this next month. 59 years. Paul and awesome. Mary Feaster. 59 years of marriage. That's awesome, wow. We appreciate your giving, your tithes and offerings. Don't forget to say happy birthday to Simeon. And Simeon's birthday. I He'll be four years old Monday. I love you. He's four years old.